Good morning. Welcome to Grace Congregational Church in Farmington, Connecticut, online. On this Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate that God sent the Holy Spirit on the earthly disciples, and God still empowers Christians all over the world with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God. Our call to worship will be Psalm 104, verses 24 to 34, and the second half of verse 35. Turn to the 104th Psalm in your Bible or in your bulletin so that you can read along. I'll be reading from the New International Version. The title for my sermon today is The Work of the Holy Spirit. Let's turn to our call to worship, Psalm 104. <coughs> How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and the Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there, these all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Renewing God, we honor you this day for the blessing of your life-giving spirit, given to us when Jesus returned to heaven and with you sent the Holy Spirit into our midst. We remember your presence with us, in the sound, the wind, and fire you sent to your first disciples. That life, energy, and power was not limited to them, but which you make available to each of us by faith. We confess we don't always expect you to work among us, to change and renew us and your church. Spirit of the living God, forgive us and fall afresh on us. We confess that because we don't understand the other tongues the, earthly disciple, the early disciples spoke, we doubt your miracle-working power today. Spirit of the living God, forgive us and fall afresh on us. We confess that though Pentecost empowered the disciples with your Holy Spirit, we feel powerless in an increasingly aggressive world. Spirit of the living God, forgive us and fall afresh on us. Hear us now as we lift our personal confessions in silence. People of God, twice, God promised the prophet Ezekiel, I will give them an undivided heart 
and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Rejoice, people of God, in Pentecost. God has fulfilled that promise. And in Jesus Christ, God promised to forgive us our sin. That promise has also been fulfilled. Thanks be to God. Let us join our voices in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues, amazed, and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. From Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church, Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all people. 
Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge, by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. The body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though its many parts, though its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. And from the Gospel of John. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this, he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and understanding of God's holy word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. What is the work of the Holy Spirit? On this Pentecost Sunday, the day we remember and celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on the first disciples, we need to know and understand the work of the Holy Spirit so that we might receive and benefit from what God longs to give us. On the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the third of the three great feasts to which all Jews living within 20, 20 miles of Jerusalem traveled to give thanks to God for the abundant harvest and to commemorate the water God provided from the rock during their wilderness wanderings, Jesus spoke to the crowds he invited and promised the crowds, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water, that is not standing cistern water, but fresh flowing water as from a spring or mountain stream, water that revives and refreshes life. Living water will flow from within him. John explained, by this Jesus meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in Jesus were later to receive. At the feast that celebrated God's gift of life-giving water, the gift of the Spirit, Jesus told his followers, by coming to Jesus, by believing in him as the Messiah, our Savior, the Holy Spirit would provide living water from within them. 19th century British pastor, known as the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon once said, without the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. We are as sailing ships without the wind, branches without sap, like coals without fire. We 
are useless. First, the work of the Holy Spirit is to produce God's living water within us, to activate God's power in our lives so that we might live in the light of God's grace and goodness. When the day of Pentecost came, the second Pentecost was the second of the three great Jewish worship feasts, occurring 50 days after Passover, the first of the three great Jewish feasts to which all Jews traveled to, uh, to Jerusalem. The disciples were all gathered together in one place. The Feast of Pentecost marked the end of the grain harvest and commemorated God's giving the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. Suddenly, a sound, like a blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Second, the work of the Holy Spirit is to fill us with the message of Jesus, our King. In 1930, the London Naval Conference, hosted by Great Britain, included representatives from the United States, France, Italy, and Japan. King George addressed the opening session of the conference, which would discuss naval disarmament and review earlier naval treaties. Radio was in its infancy, but through radio, the King's message would be carried throughout the whole world. Just before the king was to speak, a young engineer from Columbia Broadcasting Company, Walter Vivian, discovered a broken wire in the transmitter. With no time for repairs and the world waiting to hear the message of the king, the young engineer figured out what to do. He took each end of the broken wire in his hands and for 15 minutes Walter Vivian allowed the current to flow through his body so that the king's message might be heard by the world. The Holy Spirit fills us with God's message of love and compassion for our needy world. Does our king's message, the message of Jesus' love for the world, flow through us to others? It should. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Third, the work of the Holy Spirit fulfills God's dreams in us. <clears throat> when the crowd of God-fearing people came together, they experienced the manifestations of the Spirit that were happening among the disciples. The sound, the wind, others speaking in tongues, the, the fire appearing as tongues of fire on, resting on each one. That's why I'm wearing red today. It's Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit with tongues of fire appear in my stone. But the people were bewildered perplexed, amazed. Some made fun of the disciples, thinking they've had too much wine. But Peter stood up and said, these men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
American aviator Charles Lindbergh said, we actually live today in our dreams of yesterday. And living in these dreams, we dream again. Think of the dreams of space exploration that once again energize a new generation because of the SpaceX launch. But not a healthy church lives out healthy dreams. But not all church dreams are created equal. Some congregational dreams are founded on compassion, caring and concern for others. Some begin as survival techniques. Which do you believe God will, by the power of the Holy Spirit, bless? What dreams has God given you for the ministry of Grace Congregational Church? Giving dreams and visions is the work of the Holy Spirit. Are we prepared to receive those dreams? Are we prepared to act on them? Fourth, the work of the Holy Spirit is to empower us to claim Jesus is Lord. In fact, no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God can say anything bad about Jesus. Jesus has, had told his disciples, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. In his book, How Long Will You Limp?, fourth-generation Methodist minister Carlisle Fielding Stewart III wrote, Too many churches today are devoid of the spirit of Pentecost because they're dry and stale, where people are in a stupor, where worship services are wooden and so scripted they're hollow, where the preaching is dull and flat, where the singing is geritol tired, without vim and vigor, which speaks of a crucified, died, and risen Lord, where if anyone taps his foot, says amen, he's stared into silence. And if anyone shouts, thank you, Jesus, people are ready to call 911. Too many churches have become mausoleums for the dead rather than coliseums for the praise of our living God. Have we lost the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of Pentecost? Have we lost our joy for Jesus? Do we suffer from what former Duke University chaplain William Willimon said, called institutional and spiritual dry rot? If the church will survive this millennium, we must recapture our claim that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's not limp along. Let's allow God's Holy Spirit to empower us to claim Jesus is Lord. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Fifth, the work of the Holy Spirit is to give gifts to each person who claims Christ as Savior and Lord. To the Corinthian church, the Apostle Paul wrote, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all people. The Holy Spirit gives these gifts, these graces, these, this working for the common good. In other words, the gifts of the Spirit are not for our individual blessing or benefit, but to bless and benefit the body of Christ, the church, so that the church may bless 
and benefit society. Paul identified wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, discernment, speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues as gifts of the Spirit. This was and is not an exhaustive list of the gifts of the Spirit. In fact, four passages of Scripture highlight the gifts of the Spirit. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, and 1 Peter 4. Additional gifts of the Spirit include teaching, hospitality, giving, leadership, showing mercy, and service. Still not an exhaustive list. What are the gifts the Spirit has given to you? How do you know what gifts God has given you? Think of these questions and answer them. Does the gift you think God has given you give you joy and build up you and the body of Christ? Does it bless and benefit the body of Christ? Does the gift build up faith within you and the body of Christ? Does the gift increase our knowledge of Jesus and follow Christ's example? Does the gift give glory to God or to self? If it does give glory to self, then it's probably not being used as a gift of the Spirit. But if it's giving glory to God, then it's being used as a gift of the Spirit. Does the body of Christ recognize and affirm the gift? Gifts of the Spirit point us and others to God and to God's Son, Jesus. What gifts has God given you? That's the work of the Spirit in you. Baseball great Mark McGuire, who holds the Major League career record for at-bats per home run ratio, said, when I feel the ball hit right on the sweet spot, a home run is just around the corner. God has given us all gifts. A sweet spot, a special talent or ability that God has supernaturally empowered us with so that we can serve God and produce the maximum result in making a difference in our community. Producing maximum satisfaction for both God and us. That doesn't mean we won't have to work at developing the gift God has given us. We will have to work at it. But when we serve God out of the gifts of the Spirit that God has given us, our spiritual sweet spots, then spiritual home runs are just around the corner. Are you identifying, developing, and using the spiritual gifts that God has given you? Late 19th century Scottish pastor and author George MacDonald said, when in all gifts we find God, then in him we shall find all things. God gives us gifts, gifts of the Spirit, to draw us into a deeper relationship with God. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. On this Pentecost Sunday, let us increase our mindfulness of the work of the Spirit in us and in our church so that our world will receive God's blessings through us and we will do more of God's work more effectively. We will.
Amen. Let us turn our hearts and minds to God as we come in prayer. Igniting holy fire, source of our power and courage, unite our hearts and minds as we pray for our world. May all people and all nations make room for your presence and the gifts of your spirit. May they come to recognize you, love you, and trust you, O God, that all peoples in all nations might live in peace and security. We remember the places of the world threatened by oppression and repression. Bring true freedom to them, O God. Fill every world leader with your Holy Spirit of truth, that all governments might serve their people with compassion and mercy. Instructing holy justice, source of all peace and justice, unite our hearts and minds as we pray for our nation. May our nation make room for your presence and the gifts of your Holy Spirit. May we come to recognize you, your love for us. May we trust you, O God, that all our people might live in harmony and peace, especially those in the Twin Cities. Be with them, Lord. Bring calm and peace to that city and to all cities in our nation. Fill every elected and appointed leader with your Holy Spirit of life, that our government of the people, by the people, and for the people might flourish. Give us a passion for justice and truth, administered with grace and mercy. Fill President Trump, Vice President Pence, all 100 senators and 435 representatives with your truth that our democracy might flourish. Protect the men and women serving our country here and overseas. Inflowing holy grace, source of all healing, unite our hearts and minds as we pray for our neighbors near and far, those in need. Spirit of comfort, Give the comfort of your presence to all who are frail, diseased, injured, sorrowing, grieving, or dying. Spirit of good counsel, give the wisdom of your guidance to all who are discouraged, disheartened, depressed, or dismayed. Spirit of healing provision, give your hope to the hungry, the homeless, the millions unemployed. As our country reopens economically, may many who lost their jobs because of COVID-19 regain their employment and recover what they have lost in these last three months. Incoming holy joy, source of our outgoing love, unite our hearts and minds as we pray for your church in the world and Grace Church here in Farmington. May the many branches of your church reveal your life and reflect your holy name. By your spirit, give all who claim the name of Christ the grace so to live and love that your church might experience a great awakening. May your Holy Spirit move among us like the sound of a blowing wind and appear as tongues of fire on each one who calls Grace Church their spiritual home. May our understanding, acceptance, and love give witness to our faith in Christ and draw many to faith in Christ. Inflaming Holy Spirit, source of all goodness and grace, unite our hearts and minds as we pray for our extended family of faith. Renew our couples, individuals, and families, those we care about who are struggling or just trying to move forward, 
those we love facing life-threatening diseases and those grieving the loss of loved ones with Pentecost zeal. Multiply the gifts of your spirit within us and make us faithful disciples in thought, word, and deed. May the uncertainty of life in these days not draw us away from you, Lord, for you know every name, every heart, every need. Meet the needs of those we love. Hear us now as we lift the silent prayers we hold in our hearts to your throne of grace. Thank you that you hear our prayers, for we have prayed them in the name of our Savior, Jesus, our risen and ascended Savior and Lord. Amen. And now receive God's benediction. Go into the world, celebrating the Pentecost presence of God, our Heavenly Father, going before you, rejoicing in the Pentecost potential of God the Son, Jesus Christ our Savior, going with you and delighting in the Pentecost power of God the Holy Spirit residing within you to guide and direct you now and always. Let us go forth to love and serve God as we love and serve one another. Amen. See you next week.